So it's time to start on this kit. We're gonna have a few decisions to make here. I don't know if I'm gonna get PE on it in this video or not, but what I'm thinking is we're gonna use all the PE on this one. We're gonna order another kit and we are going to do a what if version with all the PE and a TOS version with just the front PE on it. And we may add a couple more winky blinkies that we didn't see on it, just to make it a little bit of a cooler kit. First thing I'm gonna do is take these off the side. I'm not gonna cut all the way up to the ship. This way I don't ruin anything. And then the rest of this, I'm just gonna file off to make sure that it's lined up properly and I don't cut too much and that doesn't leave a gouge in the side there. Even with doing that, I have a little bit of a dip here, so I'll probably have to fill that in once it's together. So we're definitely gonna be replacing these here. I, like I said before, I think this is a sensor band plus the windows over here because these are kind of really highly raised. I'm not sure what these two little bumps at the front are. If you guys know what those are, please let me know in the comments below. So if you didn't see my video last time, I did a review on the Flashmaster. This is a flexible X-Acto blade basically. The only thing I don't like about this, it's very hard to get into the handle. It wants to fall back on you. So like I said, this is flexible. So I can come across like this and take the windows off and it makes a lot easier. And you can see how that one just popped off like that. So I'm gonna take the rest of these windows off with the Flashmaster and make easy work of all these windows. My handle is messing up, it's scratching over here. That's not so good. We'll have to fix that and I'll have to be a little more careful because I don't need any extra work. It actually takes these down nicely. There's only little nubs here that I can sand down a lot quicker than if I try to do the whole nubs over here. And all those nubs are taken down now. Now I could just sand it and it'll be a lot easier to sand. And as simple as that, all that raised detail is taken off and sanded smooth. The plastic is on the soft side, which is nice, so it makes it easier to sand these details out. Okay, we have all those windows off. The easier way for me to do it was coming from the top with my X-Acto, popping them down, and then coming from the bottom like this and cutting those windows off. There was a little gouge because the plastic is soft, but it wasn't that deep. So while I'm sanding the edge down, everything is coming out pretty smooth. I know it's hard to see in white plastic, but we got rid of those side windows. We're all nice and smooth. The last thing we have to get rid of are the top windows here, and we're good to go getting rid of all that detail. So after closer inspection of my work, I did gouge it in a few spots and I used my favorite filler, Lazing and Spot Putty by Bondo. It dries quickly, it sands smooth, so this will fix those spots up. I'll sand them down and we'll be good to go after that. And there we go, all our little gouge marks are taken out. I'll just use some alcohol to wipe down the dust, and then once we prime it, we won't see any of this. Bondo, really good stuff. I'm starting to work on the PE. The holes in this are so small, even my smallest fiber optic won't go through it. In the pictures I'm looking at, there's a few windows lit up on the front of this arc, so I may try to pop those out. I did it with the guns that they provide for the wings, with my X-Acto knife, that was a little bit too big, and I ended up using a T-pin in there to poke the holes, which actually worked out pretty good. 
It's just going to be getting them to line up on this plastic and not elongate these holes too much. So I'm gonna try one or two. I don't wanna mess it up. If it doesn't work, then this just won't be lit up. So I took my T-pin again. I taped down the PE over here and I marked off the front holes. So I have little divots here and I'm drilling with the micro drill bit. Unfortunately, this is the smallest one I have. So these holes are a little big. Hopefully the PE covers that. If not, we'll get creative with Bondo again and make sure that all these little sides are patched up if it does come through. Okay, I shut down the lights to try to make it easier to see, but you can see here all these little dots is where I poked out the PE with the pin and actually the micro drill wasn't too big, so the PE is gonna cover that. So since we're going crazy and making little holes and making light, I think we're just gonna use all the PE on this kit and have a different looking bird of prey. And then we'll just build the bird of prey again like we saw in the TOS version. And here we go we have our first piece of PE pinned down to the ship. I have to clean up some extra CA glue from where I was pushing it down. That'll sand off easy enough. I'm a little mad at myself. This is a little askew, but it's not too noticeable. My fat thumbs really couldn't see what I was doing. So this side is a little bit higher than this side, but it's not too bad. So let me shut off the lights and I'll show you with the camera again underneath here. Now with the PE down, hopefully you can see where the little holes are made and then it goes dark to the back. I'm, I wasn't going to do all these holes. That would have been madness. So we're just going to do the front and maybe a couple down here on this ridge, which is going to be really hard to do. Right now, I'm just test fitting the back fin here to make sure that this little piece of PE is centered, which it is. And this way I could put on the transporter emitters over here. But what I'm finding is so far this piece here, this is all the way in. We're going to have a major gap issue over here that we're going to have to fill in with Bondo or some other type of putty. So a lot of these parts, like I was saying in the preview video, aren't supposed to be on the ship, but we're going to add them anyhow on this one. This, I'm assuming Green Strawberry made these to put these here to be transporter emitters or something like that. So we're adding those on and we're getting there slowly putting the PE on around the top half of the saucer. The next fun part of PE that we got to put on is this flimsy little band that's going to go around the deck over here. So we'll tack that on. I did order this morning some micro drill bits. So if they do fit these holes, we may light this up a little bit more. Okay, hopefully that's coming in clear. I just tacked it down so I can loop this around. This is going to be a serious pain in the butt to do. If you are using this PE when you put your top ring on, use a two window guide. If you use the second window in just at the front leading edge here, that should wrap around and you should have two windows on the other side also. So we got that next band on and I'm making the mistake so you don't have to. Where I said you should do two windows, it should be about a window and a half because if you do two windows, this side comes out slightly behind this side. So if you do the last window and about half of the other one, you should be okay. That's definitely going to be noticeable if I light it up. If you're looking from this side, it won't. If you're looking from this side, it won't either. The other thing is you're going to end up with a prominent lip on the top over here. So I was just using my X-Acto knife to try to bend this down. This way it looks a little bit better. And now I have to clean up all this glue once it's dry. The other thing I wanted to tell you was I noticed because I put my specs on over here to see what was going on. Don't use that pin method that I was talking about. Maybe you can see it. There's a, a ripple in the PE because of the pin. You're better off using the micro drills, which we're going to do later. Hopefully we can use the micro drills through here and really light this top up. Now the next piece of PE is a real pain in the neck. It's actually two pieces. It's the outer ring of those sensors or windows. This piece I think should have been made into one piece and two pieces of PE frets put into the package because this makes it a lot more difficult on the modeler and what's going to happen is we are going to have a little gap in between the tip here and we're going to have to fill that in and sand it down. It's not going to look right and now it's going to be even more difficult to align these and get them the same distance away as if it was one piece where we could just put the horseshoe on there. It would have been a much better design than putting it into two pieces like this. So we got the next band on and of course again I am short on this side. Right here is the gap in the middle and I thought I was pretty much centered and I'm a little too far to this side so I don't want to rip it all off and bend it. So again I'm going to have a short piece. I wish this piece was one piece. It would make it so much easier to get this to line up with this. Even though this is a little off it's not that far. It's like 
a hair off and this is pretty much even up here so that's not bad it's this horseshoe where you're putting it in two separate parts if you don't get it dead in the center here you're gonna have what i have two off pieces so if green strawberry ever redesigns this hopefully they put this as one piece and we can just cut it off and put it onto the ship itself next up we're gonna add the stabilizer fin here as you can see hopefully i gotta do gap work in here in here and then this piece doesn't even touch the top so what i'm going to do is just use plastruck bonding and i'm going to have to push it down this way it stays in place and we'll fill the gaps all around we have everything on the top half of the ship now we have all the pe we have the rear stabilizer we have our gaps filled in and cleaned up the next thing i'm going to do is i'm actually going to super glue a skewer to the back here so i can hold on to that and i can prime this up and see if we have any mistakes even though the mistakes are here i'm not worried about it it's going to be my model on my shelf it's not going into a show and mistakes are a good thing because now i know when i do it again i should have thought of this in the first place next time i'm just going to run a piece of tape across make sure both ends line up at the right spots and then i'll put it on the same thing in the other places that have to be equal to each other on either side it's not going to look that bad if you look from one side you're not going to notice this side if you look from this side you're not going to notice that side the only time you're really going to notice it is like on top here so it's, it's no big deal. Like I said, it'll go on the, on the shelf and we'll be good to go. So if you make mistakes, just learn from them. Don't trash your kit or anything like that. Just finish it up. I'm still gonna be proud of this once I finish it and it looks decent. It's not a big deal. If I want, I can make another one and just make it better. Now that I got the primer on there, there's a few spots that I still have to sand down some extra super glue around the edges. And unfortunately, the primer does show how difficult it is to get this bend around here and get it to sit flat. So hopefully when I do it, the flat aluminum, that doesn't show up too much. And the same thing over here. I think the aluminum will knock that down because the gray with the shadow really pops that out. But we're getting there. We'll get rid of these few deviations that I have in here once this is totally set up and dry, and then we'll move on. So this is where we're at at the build. Uh, the micro drill bits came in, so I was able to pop little holes over here. Not sure if I'm gonna pop holes on the little circles back here or just paint those in black like the windows are dark. I gotta clean up around the edges a little bit more around this PE. And what I did was, I still have to fill in a little bit of gap issue over here. Here. but because this was raised I just pushed it down and don't do that even though you have a raised portion just fill in the gaps that are there because what happens if if you push this down it's not gonna mate up right when you put this back together the tail fin actually because it was raised would fit across the back here properly there would be a gap if you could see there I had to notch that this piece of PE would have fit in beautifully if I didn't push this stabilizer down just to try to eliminate the gap so I had to make that cut in it now it'll fit but now i made myself extra work where i'm gonna have to fill in that gap with bondo and get that nice and smooth we have the rear pe on we got the whole back plate on plus the little gratings over here the nice thing about this plastic is you can see even from the little bit of light from my lamps that light would make it through here so if we do decide to light this up i may just have to thin the plastic down a little bit this way the light comes through better this hole here i'm going to have to drill out if we're going to add the lighting and put the other photon torpedo here what we're going to do with the stand is probably put a pole right here this way we could bring our wires down into a base but i'm still deciding on lighting or not tell me in the comments below if you think we should light this up and if i bend one of these corners one more time i'm gonna go crazy we also got the front pe on this was a little bit of a pain in the neck it kept wanting to peel off on me for some reason i'm pretty new to pe the only pe i've done like i said before is flat pe where i just had to glue it on take off some raised detail and put the pe on for you guys that do pe out there again let me know in the comments any tips or tricks you may have to work with pe that'll make it a little easier i did scuff up the plastic and the back of the metal just to try to make it bond a little more and uh, that kind of did the trick one thing I'm a little upset with it's not the gap here that's no big deal I'll fill that in this side I don't know if you can see it I lined it up properly and it's flush with this piece here but when I put this side on there's still a little bit of a gap so this looks like it's gonna be a little off center once I put the piece in there hopefully it's not too bad and too noticeable but I don't know why that went off center on me like I said this is flush and this isn't so that's all the PE we have right now 
Okay, what's left PE-wise are these five little circles here, five little circles here that go on the wings. I have to assume these are weapons and not living quarters or offices or anything like that. So if we're gonna light those up, I really have to test the wings out to see if we can squeeze some LEDs in there and some wire. The pieces we're not gonna use are for the nacelle caps because these don't lend themselves to lighting if we are gonna light it up. Once we make a decision, if we don't light it up, then I may put these in here, but I kind of like the nacelle caps clear. And then we also have the little vents for inside of the nacelles. I don't think I'd be able to pop all these little holes out and light that up. That would be really difficult to do, but I can try it and see. If I could get those holes done up, maybe we will shove those in there and have a light coming out of the back just to add a few more lights. So that's pretty much it for the PE that we're working with right now. Well, that's it for my first foray into PE. Uh, like I said, I've used flat PE before. I've never had to bend things or anything like that. I'll get better the more I use it, but right now this kit isn't going to be the great. The kit is nice. Uh, my PE isn't going to be the greatest. So if you guys have any tips or tricks on how you do your PE to make it come out better, or if you have your own channel and you have some videos on it, please let me know. I'd love to subscribe to you and check out what you're doing with PE. But I'm learning, so I'm having a good time learning. Uh, a little frustration, yes, but I'm having a great time learning. So if you saw the picture at the beginning of that 1350 scale refit, and you're curious about what that is, well, we're getting closer to our 4,000 subscribers. We're only 50 something away, I think 53 away. So once we hit that 4,000 subscriber mark, we're gonna have a giveaway. And if you want a shot at winning that 1350 scale refit, make sure you're a subscriber because we're gonna have a live show and only subscribers are gonna be able to get in on it and have their chance at winning that kit. So thanks again, everybody, for coming by. If you liked the video, please throw a thumbs up on it. And if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. We'd love to have you as part of the HLI community. So that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, oh, one more thing, lighting. If you guys think I should light this kit, let me know in the comments below, and we'll figure out how to squeeze some lights in here and get it lit up. So now, really, that's it from me. So make sure you're being good out there and take care of yourselves, everybody. Good seeing you all. Take care, and bye-bye, everybody.